Good morning, everybody. My name is Michael Harold. I am the communications director at SDOT, and I'm just going to be helping uh, mediate this morning's conversation. Uh, we are gathered for uh, a brief press availability this morning uh, to ensure some transparency and dialogue around an evolving situation happening in real time with regard to Pier 58. So I just want to go over a couple of rules of the road, and then I'm going to turn it over uh, to um, Park Superintendent uh, Jesus to get us going. So first and foremost, we're going to utilize uh, the chat box for people to note when they have questions during a presentation. But I'm going to ask that we please save Q&A all Q&A for the end. So again, use the chat box if it helps you uh, remember when and what you have a question about, but then we will return to Q&A and I will acknowledge people who have submitted questions either in writing uh, to then verbally ask their questions themselves and we'll take you off of mute. Or when we reach Q&A and you do have a question then that hasn't been indicated in the chat box, you can use the hand raising, the, the virtual hand raising function uh, and we will call on you that way um, and then as we've all learned a million times over um, in in these strange times please uh, keep yourself on mute um, throughout unless you've been asked to uh, raise a question or one of the panelists um, so we'll go to uh, jesus who will then turn it over to sam um, sam who will turn it back over to jesus and then over to to marshall um, and uh, i ask that as everyone is speaking just please introduce yourself so none of us are are, are guessing, though I'm sure everyone knows who everyone is. So with that, uh, I'll turn it over to Parks Superintendent Hizu to get us started. Yes, good morning. Um, thank you, Michael, and, and good morning, everyone. And, and as Michael said, we're going to um, uh, talk a little bit about the Pier 58 replacement. Uh, Director Samson Babwe will talk a little bit about the safety improvements along the waterfront, and then uh, Director Foster from the waterfront will talk about the future of the uh, Pier 58 and how it fits into the overall uh, waterfront plan. Um, but to, to kind of, by way of background, I think folks know Pier 58 is the pier along the waterfront between the aquarium and between uh, Miner's Landing, which is a pier with the Great Wheel. Uh, and this is one of two public piers that are planned to be replaced as part of the new central waterfront. So the Pier 58 replacement was already being designed. Um, the idea was to remove this, the existing pier and construct a new park and uh, a pier uh, in 2022. Um, and of course, that's because uh, like a lot of the stuff down there, Pier 58 is, is an aging piece of infrastructure um, that um, we have seen over the last couple of days um, that, that has deteriorated further. Um, earlier, excuse me, earlier this week on August 5th, our, um, our Parks and Rec staff were alerted to um, an issue at the waterfront, a failure of a water line. And when they were on site, um, they noticed that there was uh, some significant shifting of the, of the pier uh, with a visible, visible gap between the pier itself and the, the uh, adjacent uh, uh, upland there. Uh, we contacted our structural engineers who had already been monitoring this pier for some time now uh, and got a pretty quick assessment that led us to move forward with um, closing down the pier for public access uh, while we conducted further assessment to make sure that there was uh, that, that, that the place that we that uh, we could preserve public safety. Um, I will say that, that that this is a pier that that has been closely monitored actually for decades, uh, as far as back as 1989. Um, pier 58 was subjected to a formal evaluation, and just like Parks and Rec does for for its piers uh, and other waterfront structures, uh, we had reports in 2011 and 2016 by an engineering firm that made it pretty clear to us that. Uh, the best course of, uh, for the future of the pier was to replace it. Um, and, and in the meantime, while we developed a plan to replace it, uh, we were advised to, to regularly monitor um, and, and just keep an eye on things. Uh, in fact, the 2016 report that was submitted um, basically let, um, advised us that we could keep the pier uh, open while the replacement was planned, but as long as we continued to monitor it and keep vehicles off the pier itself. Um, so as we as we um, began to make a plan for the waterfront, uh, we we looked at the the reports that we've had and and you utilize that information to to move forward with the design and to fund a replacement for the pier. 
uh, as part of the, the capital projects, the overall waterfront project. So uh, that's our background. I'm going to turn it over to Director Zimbabwe. We'll talk a little bit about the safety improvements on, along the waterfront in general. Sure, thanks, Jesus. Uh, so I'm Sam Zimbabwe. I'm the director of the Seattle Department of Transportation. Um, just really briefly, the Pier 58 is next to the LFA seawall, uh, which is a separate structure, and that structure is in good shape and has not shifted along with the pier. Um, there are, as, as uh, as was mentioned, there are metal plates that span the joint between the seawall and the pier, and those are designed to accommodate the, the movement between the two structures. And um, over the last few years, as, as uh, folks know, we've invested in repairs to the seawall um, itself while ensuring public safety through regular monitoring and maintenance of, of that uh, structure. Um, over the last few years, we've continued to replace broken glass panels uh, secured guardrail cables near the miners' landing and repaired numerous metal plates and anchors near the Seattle Aquarium and Fire Station 5. Um, in addition to this ongoing work that we've done over the last few years, uh, SDOT crews immediately responded to this new development and installed the fencing that you now see and warning signs around Pier 58 uh, to make sure that we keep people safe. Um, SDOT is also the lead on permitting for um, the, the replacement structure that, that we'll talk about a little bit more, and, and we're working as rapidly as we can to expedite that permitting process uh, with our partners as we seek to ensure uh, public safety for, um, for, for people on the waterfront and for the businesses on adjacent piers as well. Um, so with that, I'll turn it back over to uh, Superintendent Aguirre briefly, and uh, then I think on to, to Marshall. Uh, thank you, uh, Director Zimbabwe. And yeah, I mean, we can turn it over to Marshall. I think I think as, as uh, Sam stated, we, we've done some work. Uh, Parks and Recreation has replaced uh, and repaired some of those transition plates along the pier uh, near the aquarium as recently as 2017 and 2019. So this is an issue that, that we're aware of and have been working to mitigate and, and try to keep the public safe there. Uh, but I'll turn it over to Director Foster to talk about the overall uh, future of Pier 58 within the waterfront project. All right, great. Good morning, everyone. Um, this is Marshall Foster. I'm the director of the city's Office of Waterfront and Civic Projects. And our office is um, a sort of a, a, a focused, uh, specialized office that is delivering the capital improvements on the waterfront um, a mix both for the um, Parks and Recreation as well as uh, SDOT, different infrastructure, including the heavy construction you see along Alaskan Way and uh, the, the replacement of Pier 62, which is the pier just north of the aquarium, which is, which is nearly complete. Um, as Jesus alluded to, yeah, the replacement of Pier 58 has been in the waterfront program from very early on. Um, the replacement of the pier fortunately is fully funded and the design of the replacement pier is just approaching 60% design, which basically means we're, we're getting close to a final design for its replacement. Um, and obviously, given the news from, from last week, we're working closely with both the Parks Department and SDOT to make sure that we're keeping the waterfront safe and we're very appreciative of the fast work that took place to get fencing up and ensure that the public uh, stayed off of the pier. What you can expect to see from the waterfront program is we will complete that design uh, over the next six months. And we expect to complete the permitting process and to actually start the replacement construction of the new pier in 2022. It will take about two years uh, to complete the replacement pier. Um, so you'll see completion of it in um, early to mid 2024. Um, so I think, you know, on our, from our perspective, you know, the design is, is uh, close to resolution. Uh, it's been through many years of, of, of public review and discussion, both in the community as well as at the Seattle Design Commission and elsewhere. And we're just feeling fortunate that we do have a full plan in place with funding to be able to replace Pier 58. Um, in terms of the specifics, um, our budget for the replacement is $65 million. Um, and it has a mix of funding sources attached to it. Once the new pier is completed, uh, it'll actually be operated through a partnership. The Seattle Parks Department will continue to maintain and operate the pier as it, as it has historically. We'll also have the um, participation of the Friends of Waterfront Seattle, which is a nonprofit organization that was committed 
specifically to help program and activate our waterfront to keep it safe and inviting, they will be a partner to the Seattle Parks Department uh, to help make that pier uh, successful and, and um, inviting in the future. Um, so that's a little bit about um, where we are in terms of the replacement plan. And I think I'll turn it back over to you, Jesus, for some next steps. Thank you, Marshall. Um, and, and I think so So um, as a result of, of um, some additional information we got from the engineers yesterday, uh, they confirmed our concerns in terms of the um, de deterioration of the facility and, and uh, they, the pier has experienced some significant shifting and, and is no longer safe for public access. Uh, and of course, they've confirmed what we already knew, but uh, the idea that we have to remove this pier um, and they confirmed that we need to accelerate the removal. Uh, so the pier is shifting in multiple places and, and our removal plan is going to have to take into, uh, into account the fact that there are adjoining properties, the aquarium to the north uh, and the miners landing and the Great Rill uh, piers to the south. So whatever plan we put in place with the engineers and the contractors will make sure that uh, preserves uh, the the integrity of, of the neighboring properties, uh, and also as as in many cases, some of the utilities um, are shared or run across some of the parks and recreation properties. So we'll have to work through that. So uh, I think the the conclusion here is that the that the pier is not going to reopen to the public, um, and and again, we're going to have to remove it sooner than we anticipated. Uh, we've already been work, begun working with our partners at the Office of the Waterfront and Transportation, um, and, and we'll begin a plan to accelerate that removal, uh, including the permitting process, which uh, Sam mentioned is, is um, under the, the auspices of, of the Department of Transportation. So the timing really is going to depend on um, uh, sort of the contracting, but dictated by, by the engineering reports and, and making sure that we can remove the pier safely uh, and then it doesn't uh, create any challenges to the adjoining properties. Uh, we will be um, uh, enhancing the project page that, that exists for Pier 58, uh, and we're committed to continuing to provide updates uh, as this work uh, progresses, both uh, on that website and, and as, as um, we, we get a tighter plan for the removal and replacement, we'll, we'll uh, push that out publicly as part of a press release as well. So. Uh, on that note, I'll stop and see if there are any questions that um, either Marshall or Sam or I could, could try to answer. Thank you so much. So um, again, just a reminder, people can, can utilize the chat function if that's easier than, than taking yourself off mute or technical uh, challenges are preventing you from, do so, from doing so, but we would ask that people please use the hand raising function the tiny little hand icon uh, that we will use to note that you have a question. Um, and then we will call on you and then please uh, bring yourself off mute or we will work to do so on the back end um, and work through your question. So first question, uh, Graham Johnson noted that you have a question and then Kevin Schofield will go to you next. Uh, go ahead, Graham. Hey, thank you so much. Uh, just a, wondering if you might be able to just given a little more detail, kind of exactly the, the failure that we're seeing. I, as I was down there a little while ago, it looked like it was kind of slumping sort of maybe to the southwest, but you mentioned that there's failure in multiple places. I don't know, do we have any, uh, you know, pilings that have broken that, I, you know, that aren't visible, that kind of thing. Can you just describe the, you know, the what's happened here in the last week or so, a little more detail. Yeah, and, and we'll be able to, I'll take that, we'll be able to, to to give you more specifics once we get a written report by the engineers who were out there yesterday. But but you're right, it, it is sh shifting several places. Um, I, you know, once once we get that specific information from the engineers, we'll post that along with the other two reports that are up. Great, thank you. Uh, Kevin, you are next on the list. Okay. Uh, can you hear me? We can hear you. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Great. Um, so, just a couple of follow-up questions on the funding. Uh, so, uh, you mentioned that uh, the funding is secured for this. Um, what are the exact sources of the funding for this? And in particular, is lid funding implicated in this at all? And um, it, since it looks like you have to accelerate the demolition of the existing pier. Uh, you know, it, it, is the funding available now to go ahead and do that, or are you going to have to draw from other sources for that? 
Sure, I can take I can take that one. Um, so the short answer, Kevin, on the LID is uh, yes, there are LID funds included in, in the Pier 58 budget. I'll just break it down for you real quick. Um, of the 65 million, um, 27 million is from the LID. 27 million is from our philanthropic partners, and 11 million is from city funds, including the Metropolitan Park District. Um, if um, demo demo is needed in the short term, whether it's partial, complete, um, we are confident we'll be able to find funding to do that because of the public safety uh, need for it, and uh, we'll be looking at you know um, sources within the waterfront program to help make that happen. Thank you, Marshall. Thank you. Kevin, does that answer your question? Yeah, that did. Thanks. Great, thank you. Uh, Rich, Rich Smith, you are next on the list. Can you hear me? We can hear you, yep. Great, um, could you describe uh, the potential danger to the uh, nearby peers? Um, uh, you know, do you know how, uh, uh, what could happen to the Seattle Great Wheel or what could happen to the uh, aquarium? Um, I'll, I'll start a little bit, but I, I think I, fundamentally the answer to those questions is really going to come from the engineer's report. But but I would I will say that that we are concerned about the shifting and it's shifting in, in several different places. Um, the the piers are, are separate from each other, so it's you know this pier is not attached to the aquarium pier is not attached to the to the pier to the south. Uh, but obviously, if it, it's moving and shifting, uh, there could be some some impact there if we don't move quickly. So the engineering report will sort of tell us that. I don't know specifically. Um, depending on how it's shifting and which way it's moving, would 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 determine um, sort of what, if any, specific potential impact it will have on the neighboring properties. But again, we'll we'll have more information once we get the written report from the engineer. And and of course, that will be incorporated into our plan. Uh, as we remove it and, and certainly will impact the timing of this because if there is uh, any risk to any of the properties, obviously that's going to be part of our calculus here to try to move it as quickly as possible. Thank you. Um, Christine, I see a question uh, written out by you. Would you like to to ask it um, directly? And if not, uh, I can I can read it out for you. Could you read it out? I think I'm new to the conference. We can hear you. It's a little, it's a little garbly, but let's let's try, and then uh, I can always do my best interpretation. It just sounds. I'm I'm Christine Claridge, Seattle Times. It sounds like you're not really going to hurry up at all. You're just going to be like, yeah, okay, we're going to close this off, remove it, and we're pretty much sticking to the same plan because this is not that much of an emergency. Um, yeah, no, I, 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 I mean, it, we we are going to remove it at an accelerated rate. Um, so it is it is uh, enough of an emergency where uh, we felt compelled to fence it off and secure it, and not allow public on it any longer. Uh, we put that temporary fencing up uh, pending further analysis and evaluation from the engineers. And now that we've had that, um, uh, that now that that's happened, then that will um, inform how quickly we we do this. But 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 it's clear to us that that this will need to be accelerated and it will be need to be removed sooner than we expect. And we will move forward with doing that. And I can also add that, you know, SDOT is the lead on the permitting uh, aspect of, of of that, and we will do everything we can to ex expedite and, and accelerate that. Um, but but we'll need to go through the, the permitting process for for demolition um, and also for the for the reconstruction. And, and I, I, I want to clarify a little bit. I misspoke earlier when I talked about the fact that these piers were not connected. It turns out, I'm told, the Pier 57 and Pier 58 are actually interconnected. So that will obviously be part of our uh, evaluation as we as we determine a plan for the removal. Uh, in addition, there are um, some uh, utilities that need to be that need to be that are tied together to, on our pier that are going to need to be disconnected or moved to make sure that there's no risk of those being. Uh, sheared off and pulled off.
Thank you. And Graham, I see that you have another question. You're you're welcome to come off of off of mute and ask your question directly. Thanks so much. Um, and just uh, following up on that, if you do have to relocate utilities, could that impact, uh, you know, the neighboring piers? I mean, the aquarium, these are places that have taken a big hit with COVID. And I can only imagine if, you know, they would somehow have a, a problem where they have to have utilities disconnected. Do, do we have a sense of that yet? And also, can you just clarify, and I may have missed this, when um, that newest engineering report is expected to be available, the one that will you know, give us more information about the, the problem. I may have missed that. I apologize. Yeah, in terms of the report, so so the the, the engineers were out there yesterday, and so we're waiting to get um, an, an official report from them in writing. And as soon as we get it, we'll make it available. Obviously, they they've shared uh, verbally some of their findings, which again confirms that that um, what we already knew, which was that that this pier is failing, and and we need to remove it. We just need to remove it a little faster than we anticipated. Uh, in terms of the utilities, um, you know, we, we can we can follow up and and give you a specific answer to that question. But but there, you know, obviously, if uh, I know, for example, on the aquarium side, there's a new substation there, a new access for electrical stuff that is on their pier that that um, uh, it wouldn't be impacted by the removal of the pier, except potentially for a little bit of access. But uh, so their operations wouldn't be impacted in terms of the utilities. Uh, but we'll confirm uh, in terms of the, the other utilities. And again, obviously, we want to make sure that, that the impact to other businesses is mitigated. So we'll incorporate that into our planning and make sure that we don't um, uh, impact folks unnecessarily. I'll just I'll just add to that as well. You know, we're in the middle of rebuilding Alaskan Way right now. Um, there are hundreds of utility connections which are being um, replaced. So we have a whole process with the support of City Light and, and SPU that we go through to provide some other connections when they're needed and to time any type, types of outages for times when businesses are closed, off hours. So if that were needed here, we would have the same approach and protocol for how we help to make sure businesses like Miner's Landing or the aquarium, if they had to be impacted, which we don't know, but if they were, that, that they were able to keep, keep operating. Thank you, Marshall. I'm looking through and uh, I'm not seeing additional hands or questions in the chat box. Um, if folks have a question, uh, here's one more chance to ask it uh, while acknowledging that this is early days and, and uh, opportunities for sharing additional, more detailed information are just over the horizon, but we wanted to make sure that there was press availability first thing this morning. Um, and not seeing any additional hands. I'd like to just turn it over. Um, <laughs> Kevin, I see you, your, your hand going up. Um, Kevin. Uh, so uh, who issues the permit? Is that the state? And are you anticipating any issues around uh, sort of shoreline restrictions, anything, or is that all taken care of in the waterfront master plan already? So I can speak a little, a little bit to this. Um, so Kevin, we we have actually already, there's already been some communication since the event with our primary permitters, which is the Army Corps of Engineers, um, Department of Natural Resources. Um, so they're already aware that we're, you know, we have a situation and we may be pursuing some short-term uh, permits for for partial or, or complete demolition. That's a discussion that needs to take place. That's all couched in the larger permitting discussion that's already underway for the replacement of Pier 58 as a whole. So there's a really good ongoing staff dialogue already about the new pier. Um, and so we're able to take advantage of that, that conversation and those relationships to deal with this immediate um, permitting need potentially around, around the pier today. Thank you, Marshall. Um, so I'd now like to turn it um, over to Superintendent Aguirre for closing remarks and then, and then Sam and, and Marshall. Um, and just noting a little housekeeping bit, we will continue um, to share the reports and materials as they come out through, through press releases, blogs, uh, but we will also start hosting them on the Pier 58 project site uh, and look forward to sharing more of those details with everybody uh, later this week. Thank you.
Sure, thank you. And um, I, not much to add here to wrap up, but just again, we look forward to, as you said, Michael, to continue to share information with the public, uh, the, inf the the documents that we get. Also look forward to working closely with the waterfront and SDOT uh, as we move forward. Um, uh, of course, unfortunately, we're, we're, you know, this is happening a little faster than we expected, but the good news is this is a project that was already planned is funded um and we've got two great partner agencies uh, that that will help us um, make this uh, happen very very quickly so uh thanks everyone for coming and thanks for the great questions and i'll turn it over to my colleagues here and if they want to add anything in closing sure i'll just reiterate our um our efforts focused on the the safety and the infrastructure of the seawall, which uh, is is in good shape and has not shifted, um, and and then our work, I think, across all all city government to make sure we're holding the safety of the the public and and the businesses and the surrounding structures first and foremost in our in our actions and our uh, the urgency with which uh, we're all acting to to bring this forward. Yeah, nothing more to add. I'll just I'll just reiterate that the the public safety has come first in this. We're we're fortunate to have funding in place to be able to advance uh, replacement, and our office really looks forward to working with the public and our partners to get this done. All right, thank you, everybody. Appreciate the time, and the opportunity to to share an update. And as I mentioned, we'll continue to share information with regard to the situation that's that's happening in in real time. Um, through links and also posting for general public access in the Pier 58 project page. Thank you all so much. Cheers.